Isn't this a beautiful object? Only three rocket swords are known to have survived to the present day, so we're very lucky to have this one, which is stored in the Royal Collection. These photographs, by Runjeet Singh, are fantastic, of course, but the sword itself is a great launching-off point for us to discuss the rockets of the 18th century. Wooden paper war rockets were first in use in China. In India, the Delhi Sultanate used handheld rockets probably introduced by the Mongols. However, the invention of long-ranged, iron-cased rockets has consistently been attributed to the Kingdom of Mysore, whose formidable Tipu Sultan clashed with the British in three Anglo-Mysorean wars, the first of which he actually won. His father had deployed the same weapons and formed a special rocketry unit in the Mysorean army. After Tipu Sultan's defeat at Seringapatam in 1799, items of his weapons and armour were brought to the UK and gifted to George III and George IV. The British were impressed enough by the weapon to study it and create their own version, the Congreve rocket, famous for its appearance in the US national anthem in the line, and the Red Rocket's glare. Because of the prominence of Mysorean rockets in histories and collections, other rockets found in India have often been attributed to Mysorean rocket makers or other states copying the Mysorean design. However, it has recently been suggested that the Iron Case War rocket does not originate in Mysore at all. François Bernier, a French medic and traveller, mentioned the use of Banas at the 1658 Battle of Sumagar between Mughal princes Aurangzeb and Darajako, which he described as a sort of grenade attached to a stick. The Victoria Memorial Connection has two metal-cased rockets from the Deccan, which Aurangzeb took as trophies after its 1687 capture of Golconda. This brings us back to the rocket sword, which was collected by Sir William Farrington in the 18th century. No source we know of describes Mysorean rockets with sword blades, despite all the attention they received at the time. All are described as being attached to wooden tubes or canes. Additionally, James Forbes, a bookkeeper for the East India Company describes a kind of rocket sword in his journal of his 1760s travels through the Maratha Confederacy. The war rocket used by the Marathas, which very often annoyed us, is composed of an iron tube 8 or 10 inches long and near 2 inches in diameter. This destructive weapon is sometimes fixed to an iron rod, or sometimes to a straight two-edged sword, but most commonly to a strong bamboo cane 4 or 5 feet long with an iron spike projecting beyond the tube to this rod or staff. We see a crescent-shaped iron spike on the head end of the rocket sword's rocket, though it has been bent off centre during its time in the antiquities market. Further evidence of widespread Maratha use of war rockets comes from a reconnaissance report about Peshwa Baji Rao's the first's army at Dabul in 1731. This report was made by his enemy, Trimbuk Rao. It describes Baji Rao's army as possessing 10,000 rockets, 400 camel-mounted rocket launchers, and 100 elephant-mounted rocket launchers. Tellingly, these are listed with other iron war material, such as cannon and long-range field guns. Still, we're left with the question of why British sources in the Anglo-Maratha Wars make little mention of rocketry. Some documents about the design and chemistry of Maratha rockets do survive from India today, so work on these sources may provide us with a better understanding of the history of this weapon.